Hey everyone, I recently purchased Dell's latest 34-inch curved gaming monitor, and I decided to make a quick review out of it. So here it is, and here's my honest take on it. <laughs> to begin, here is a quick spec breakdown of the monitor itself. The monitor is of course 34 inches curved. It has a 144Hz refresh rate, depending on the port, and it has a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. The native resolution is WQHD3440 by 1440 and the monitor itself has a response rate of 1 millisecond or 2 millisecond in extreme mode. The color support on it is 16.7 million colors. The panel itself is VA and the dimensions are 31.81 by 9.22 by 16.82 inches. The first thing I thought when I got this monitor was that this thing is massive. Coming in at 34 inches, it is the largest monitor I have ever owned. However, after using it for some time, you do get used to the size. So it may seem large at first, but you do get comfortable with it over time. Now, my primary uses for this monitor included gaming, video editing, and general web browsing, like YouTube. With respect to gaming, if you're into real-time strategy games, first-person shooter games, and other highly competitive games, this may not be the best choice for you as some of the screen is out of your peripheral vision. However, if you're a more casual gamer, you should definitely consider getting this monitor. If you're also the type of person that's looking for a more immersive experience or a storytelling experience, this would definitely be the right fit for you because this screen covers your horizontal vision entirely. Moving on now to video editing. As an editor myself, this is probably every editor's dream monitor. With a 34-inch display, the timeline fits perfectly into the screen, so you don't catch yourself scrolling forward and back on the timeline. Also, if you work with a lot of video layers and video tracks, this can easily fit up to 4-5 to five tracks vertically without losing too much of the video preview. With respect to watching videos on YouTube, it has great quality. The only thing is that you're left with black bars on the side of the monitor, mostly because YouTube videos are not rendered at a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. But if you're watching a movie or a TV show on Netflix, this would definitely make for a great viewing experience. Now, one thing I do have to pick on is the VA panel. The VA panel just makes the colors of the monitor seem a bit darker than what they should be and not as bright, as if there's a little bit of extra contrast in the color itself. Here is a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the monitor itself against one with an IPS display. As you can tell, you can really notice the brightness difference. Now the price of the monitor is much less than Dell's top-of-the-line Alienware monitors. This monitor goes for around $855 Canadian or $680 USD, whereas the Alienware counterpart would go for around $1320 Canadian or $993 USD. Now the question becomes, should you buy this monitor? And that really depends on what you do. If you're a competitive gamer and like intense games, or the color brightness really matters to you as a video editor, then I would definitely not recommend this monitor. However, if you're a more casual gamer or a casual video editor, and you're looking for a more immersive experience, while still staying on a budget, this monitor is definitely for you. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video review. And if you did like it, please smash that like button, leave a comment in the comment section below, and tell me your thoughts. Do you plan on getting this monitor? And if you'd like more tech reviews like this, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Until next time.